Hello and welcome back to Man V Film. It's time for my watch pile update for April 2024. It has been a difficult month. A few things going on this month always makes things a little bit harder for me. Uh, it's my birthday for one, uh, things come up for that. I've got a couple of movies. Um, I had a charity walk that I was doing, a kilt walk is what it's called. Uh, it was 23 miles and I spent a lot of time training for that getting out and doing it. Uh, I did that Sunday past there, uh, which was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I will definitely do it again next time I get the chance. It was fun. So a lot of things just forced me to take a back step in my movie watching. Unable to kind of do everything that I wanted to do, which is fine. I kind of knew it was coming. Then there was the indicator sale, which I knew was going to throw things up, just make it a little bit difficult for me as well. Because, hey, I want stuff, and I was going to get stuff, and I did get stuff, sticking roughly to my budget, which I was happy about. So let's dive into what I picked up this month. So if I'll start off with the indicator ones, which you may have already seen the pickup video. I'll run through them. Uh, the Night of the Following Day, which will be the next one I watch from this indicator pile. I uh, picked up Girl Stroke Boy. Uh, the Blockhouse, which I've heard is harrowing. My Sunday Dad movie, uh, Midway. Next Sunday Dad movie, MacArthur. Night Has a Thousand Eyes, Edward G. Robinson. I threw that one on pretty much straight away when it came in. It's an interesting one about uh, someone who becomes, who, who's pretending to be psychic, who acts actually becomes psychic it gets very talky all the way through it with lots of telling rather than showing but it's edward g robinson it's fun it's good it's interesting um, and it was a great place in the sale i picked up cold eyes of fear on 4k which is when i really wanted to check out enzo g castellari that's what sold me on that one i do have a uh, one rolling movie which a friend gave me a while back, which I am going to be watching soon to test the waters, if I can dig it out here. And it is Shiver of the Vampire. But I didn't pick that up this month. And uh, I will try and get to that at some point this month. And uh, Second Sight release, The Borderlands, which I've reviewed. Uh, really enjoyed that one for a found footage movie. Great deal of fun. 4K, The Return of Swamp Thing was great. So cartoony and over the top it it felt like a comic book movie, which I really appreciated. My friend Jeff has sent me a film that I have never heard of. That's always kind of exciting. It was a birthday present, and it is Moon Garden. Uh, I'll be watching this soon. Try not to read the back of it or look at anything. I'll just go into it and check it out. Uh, from Vinegar Syndrome, we got Lady Reporter, which came out on Eureka last year. It's a good movie, but I enjoy it. They did a 4K disc of Witch Story. Two covers. I actually enjoy this. Incredibly 80s, very typical of the genre. A group of kids go to a house, carnage ensues. It's fun. It is what it is. It's nothing special, but a good time is had. Unlike The House Where Death Lives, I have a review coming up for this. One of those rare... I didn't like it reviews and i'll explain entirely why in that review but let's just say boring then i picked up three imprint titles this month got strange invaders review um, is on the way or if it's not already dropped really weird early 80s campy science fiction throwback to the 50s horror movies kind of fun we have an adventure heist movie in green ice which is tonally all over the place and just strange but fun and the incredibly fun Zatichi with uh, Takeshi Kitano directing and starring in this one. Had a whole lot of fun with this one. Again, this one is really inconsistent with its tone, uh, what it's trying to do. It feels super serious at times and then incredibly slapstick at other times, yet somehow it just works. We'll talk about this more in the review for Zatichi. So, FOMO, terrible thing, 
and I know it is because um, trying to control finances because things have been getting a little bit out of control and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm picking up things that I really want to see but this is one of those ones that I just I just got because it had been out of print and it's Inspector Rear Skirts 2. I've still got part one sitting up there to watch which I haven't watched as yet and now I have part two to check out as well. Parts three and four are out as well and I got a discount code for my birthday and I am tempted to pick those up. I really should check out the first two to see how I got on with that. Next up we have the wonderful Footprints or Footprints in the Moon. I love this movie. This was all kinds of weird and trippy and interesting. I really like what Shameless are doing now. The, the stuff they're putting out is really high quality. Uh, there is two titles that they recently released that I need to get at some point. I believe it's The Nun and The Nurse, which I will pick up uh, the next time I have money. Then on to some Radiance things. So, so uh, partner label, The Boss, which the review's up on the channel already. Loved it. Uh, Fernando De Leo uh, really caps off his triptych of Italian mafia movies, which were great. Henry Silva stars in this one. Super violent. Very typical of a gangster movie, but it makes it its own. Uh, the Shape of Night, which I know absolutely nothing about, and as soon as I'm done here, I'm watching this one. Shuju River, the, the review is up on the channel, check it out, it's a really interesting film and coming, might be out already, depending on when I post this, Misunderstood, Luigi Comancini, wow, what a film this, <laughs> this has been a pretty good month for Radiance, I still have the shape of the night to check out, but some great stuff going on here. Uh, Black Mask, which was a fun throwback to when I was getting into Jet Li movies. Uh, nothing super serious, just a kind of fun throwaway action movie. Much like the China O'Brien movies on 4K UHD. I absolutely adore that first one. And it's hard to really justify if you've just come to the movies. Nostalgically, they were just a rare treat for me in the video days. And I loved revisiting it. Second one... I don't remember as well. It was fun, but the first one for me is a standout. And the final one got this month, Cat in the Canary. It was great to see Eureka doing a silent again, especially one that I have wanted to see for the longest while. And even though the, the story was super familiar, I'd seen remakes, I knew exactly what it was, the filmmaking is what really stood out here. It was marvellous. Okay, so that's everything that I picked up this month. Uh, 26 movies in total, which is a little bit higher than last month. Uh, and it shows. Let's dive into my letterbox and see. So you'll see as it gets later on to the month when I'll be starting to get ready for my, my walk that it tailors off a bit. But I watched Evil Dead Trap on the 4th of the month. That was incredibly fun. Uh, there's a review in the channel. It was just, yeah, there's something about that I just loved. The Return of Swamp Thing, again, not a good movie. Kind of reminded me of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. But again, so colourful and comedic and, and vibrant and just fun. Fight Back to School 2, where the review has just come up for that one, was a nice return to form to see Star uh, back again at high school, looking way out of place, being involved in a criminal investigation in the middle of a high school. It was fine. I still have the third part to watch on this trilogy. I had a feeling that these were all going to run into one another, so I've been giving it a good bit of time between the movies. So I'll probably wait another month or so and then watch part three. The Cat and the Canary, like I said, um, really great. I'm actually, the more I think about it, the more I appreciate it. The filmmaking is pretty terrific and it is one I want to go back and check out again. China O'Brien which for some reason I'm sure I'd give that five stars because I just love it. It's not a five-star movie, but for me, it's a five-star film, if you know what I mean. Look, you've probably got films at yourself that you know they aren't the best things ever, but you, they just tick all your boxes and they've got a little nostalgic kick as well. That's China O'Brien. Black Mask, um, which was good. The Borderlands, which was pretty good for a found footage movie. Um, Godzilla vs. Kong, The New Empire. Which, yeah, I think that was the second time seeing that. I took my daughter to see it. She went to see it. It's incredibly entertaining. It's daft as a brush. Uh, yeah, 
great. The Warriors, uh, I finally visited the 4K on that, which was wonderful to go and check out. I absolutely adore that film. It's one that I've seen countless times, and I just never get tired of it. This was the first time I was showing a friend it, and it was amazing. Conan the Barbarian is another one that I've seen many times. Now, there is moments where I get a little bit confused when it's been a while between Destroyer and Barbarian. I know Barbarian is the better movie, but I was not prepared for this revisit with just how amazing and perfect that is. Yeah, a, a terrific uh, film. Party Girl, I have a review coming for that soon. It's a movie that I hated the characters, absolutely hated them at the start of the movie, and one eventually grew on me, and uh, it became a movie that I did, in the end, somewhat enjoy, but wow, that was a tough turnaround. Sex Mission was a fantastic Polish satirical comedy about a world where two male uh, astronauts, I suppose, or, or whatever you want to call them, take this experiment into hand where they're going to be frozen and then thawed out in three years to rapturous applause and stardom. Unfortunately, they wake up several decades later to a world where men no longer exist and they are the only two men left on the planet and under much scrutiny from these people who just don't understand the hell a man is. It's, it's fun. Conan the Destroyer was... It's fine, but after that, complete first movie where it just nailed everything. It felt like such a letdown. Uh, budgetary constraints. The script's not as strong. The performances are kind of a shadow of what they were. It's still entertaining, but it's nowhere near the quality of Barbarian. Clear Cut was fantastic. That was a, a really good one. In fact, uh, check out the review for that when it comes, because I don't want to talk about that too much. T.R. Baskin is another one of those Fun City editions which the synopsis didn't enamour me, but the performances, the characters, the story really won me over. Evil Dead Trap 2, Hideki. If you see my review for this, you know that I just, I, I, there was just something about it so jarring that I didn't get it. I feel that there's a kernel of something there that's going to draw me back. But that first viewing was so um, off-putting and, and unusual. The Reckoning was an older indicator release that I've had sitting on my collection for years uh, after being virtually bullied by someone on my Discord, <laughs> Matt, hi. Uh, I finally checked out The Reckoning and grudgingly had to agree. It was pretty fantastic. Civil War, I saw it at the cinema. I love this movie. Uh, I can understand why people are probably hating it. They're taking it as commentary on America, where, to be honest, I think that's just the setting. It's more about war photography and these people who travel around and see the most horrific things and have to deal with that in their day-to-day -day life. How it becomes a passion that ultimately burns them out, destroying them. Yeah, great film. Night is a Thousand Eyes, like I spoke a little bit about. Footprints in the Moon. I loved that movie. That was so good. Um, Green Ice. Kind of average, a uh, fun, uh, almost a Sunday movie, but tonally all over the place. Strange Invaders was interesting, again, tonally weird, but fun. China Brian 2, not as good as the first one. Zatichi was a whole lot of fun. The Boss was really terrific. I really enjoyed visiting that one. Witch Story was fine. And The House Where Death Lives was, like I said, super boring. That's one of the rare movies where... I've actually got a review up for it, if you want to check that out. And then Suju River rounded out this month, uh, that Radiance film, which I really kind of enjoyed. Let's have a look at what is coming out in May and see what I am picking up. We have Le Fou on Radiance, which I'll probably get at some point. I'm tempted to get The Crow on 4K. I love The Crow. It's fantastic. And after seeing the trailer for the new one, which looks abysmal, I want to go back and revisit that again. It just... Oh, wow. The Garbage Pool Kids movie? Now, there's a blast from the past. I remember this horrific thing from my childhood. Uh, 
and I know it wasn't a good movie, but nostalgia has drawn me to that. I did not realise that was coming out. Hmm. Maybe. Just maybe. Let's see what else there is. Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker. Possibly. That's a, a maybe. Uh, I would like to see The Last Committee at some point. It's just got a host of uh, terrific action stars in it, including Cynthia Rothrock which makes me really kind of curious about checking it out. Is there anything else? Nothing else there. Into me. Nope. Uh, May 20th, we have the Whistler set from Indicator. I kept meaning to order that and I missed the discount because I forgot. That will be a treat for myself if uh, I can get the watch list down because it's eight movies. <laughs> it's a lot to add to the, the collection at once. Um, let's see what else we have. Lots of reissued indicator titles here. Just seen most of. At the end of the month, we have Planet of the Vampires, which is, uh, yeah, it's about time we got a UK release. We have The Long Good Friday from Arrow. We have Fist of Legend from 88 Films, which is, um, yeah, I've heard good things about. We have the Shinobi set, which I am super excited about. I love the Bounty Hunter box set, so I'm really curious to see the next one for Radiance here. Uh, Trent Laquin is a recent movie for Radiance, which looks interesting. We also have the Valiant ones in 4K, and the Prison Walls set from Eureka, and A Queen's Ransom. Wow, this month, or even this week, looks as if we're going to have to have a Sophie's Choice here. Yeah. Wow, the UK is getting Santa Sangra on 4K. That's amazing. If you haven't seen that, that is a terrific Jodorowsky film. You need to pick that one up. We have Enter the Clones of Bruce Lee, which is the Bruce Lee documentary from Severin, which I'm, I'm kind of interested in checking out as well. Okay, so it's pretty quiet up until the end of the month where, you know, yeah, I mean, I think I'm just going to have to save everything for that week because that week looks incredible. Count Dracula 4K is something I'll probably pick up further down the line because there's no rush for that. But this week here is the week, you know, Planet of the Vampires, Long Good Friday, Fist of Legend, maybe, um, Frank Laquin, Shinobi, definitely, The Valiant Ones, definitely. Prison Walls, Abishiri Prison, yep, Queen's Ransom, yes, oh, so many good things. Uh, CJ7 is a Stephen Chow movie, I've been enjoying those, that looks wacky as hell and it's probably one I'll pick up my discount further down the line. Tough, tough month, yeah. I would love to know if there's anything you're picking up this month, anything that jumps out to you that you need to get. I'm still blown away that Garbage Pail Kids is getting a release and I'm going to have to think long and hard, hard about that one because, you know, <laughs> I know it's not going to be good, but there is something that makes me want to watch that again. I still love the cards, collected them all the time. Talk about a nostalgic kick. Overall, numbers for the month. I Let's just see. I have a list here. I ended March with 227 on the watch pile. I added... 26 movies to it, but I watched 27. So we went down to 226. Now, it's not a big decrease, but it's a decrease. I, I, I had a lot of things on, and I still managed to get it down to that. May is going to be another month where I need to try and get on top of it and see if I can get it down a good chunk more. At the end of the month, it looks difficult. So we'll have to wait then and see how we got on. Let me know if you watched anything interesting this month. If there's anything you're planning to pick up in May, let me know in the comment box below. And what do you think I should do about Garbage Pail Kids? Just throw it out because if I watch it, I'm reviewing that thing. Whoa. Yeah, so let me know in the comment box below your thoughts about all my watches, all my pip-ups and Garbage Pail Conundrum. As always, there is more content up here. You can see more of my stuff in the description box below or links to Patreon, membership program, and mandyfilm.com. Always in which you can support. Thanks for watching. See you next time.